So here we have an optimization problem in calculus. And what we want to do is we want to find the points on the ellipse 8x squared plus y squared equals 8. We want to find the points on the ellipse that are furthest away from the point 1 comma 0. And do notice that 1 comma 0 does lie on the ellipse. Okay, so what do we want to do in this question? Well, again, we're trying to maximize a distance. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to maximize a distance. We're trying to find points on the ellipse that are furthest away from that point 1 comma 0. And again, I think you can probably believe that there'll be two points just by symmetry here. I've got one labeled generically, and that'll be enough. So we're trying to maximize the distance. Well, recall the distance between uh, two points. That just comes from the distance formula. So there's our, our, our distance formula. But in our case, right, we, we've got, we know that we're using the specific point 1 comma 0. Well, again, there's some point on the parabola. I don't know what its coordinates are. So again, let's just call it x comma y, something generic. So what are we trying to do? Well, we're still trying to maximize a distance, but we're trying to maximize a distance between, again, these, these two specific points. We said we're going to do the, the, the point, uh, we're going to use 1 comma 0, and then the other one generically will be x comma y. So if we fill in our distance formula, what are we going to get? Well, we would have x minus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 0 quantity squared. So our distance, that's just going to be x minus 1 squared plus y squared. I think I'm going to go ahead and square out this stuff underneath the square root as well. Why not? So that would be x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared. So all I did was I just distributed, right? I took x minus 1 and multiplied that by x minus 1 to get the x squared minus 2x plus 1 is what I did real quick there. Now, one last thing. We want to, okay, well, let's think about two things first. Um, this is what we want to maximize. Now, notice we've got two variables, right? We've got x's floating around, but then I also have a, a y floating around, and I would like to get this down to a single variable. But this is where we can go back to our, our equation of our ellipse, because the point lies on the ellipse, so we can make use of this, this relationship. So it says 8x squared plus y squared equals 8. So 8x squared plus y squared equals 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this y squared. So I'm going to rewrite my ellipse as y squared equals 8 minus 8x squared. And that's what I'm going to substitute in. So now it says my distance. That's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared, which is 8 minus 8x squared. All right, so we've got some more like terms. Let's keep simplifying. So all I'm doing is just simplifying this, this distance formula right now. It looks like we have a 1 and an 8. That's going to give me a 9. Um, I see a negative 2x in there, so there's my negative 2x. And it looks like we've got a positive x squared and a negative 8x squared. So I'm getting negative 7x squared. Okay, so this is now my distance, all in terms of x. And again, this is what we want to, um, this is what we want to maximize, right? This is what we're trying to maximize. Now, normally, again, I would say start taking the derivative because once we have a function, we take the derivative and we're in business. But don't do that in this case. Don't, so this, there's a trick in this one. Don't take the derivative just yet. So there's a trick in this one to make it easier when you see this, this question. So there's a trick. And the easier thing to use, so this is the magic. So the magic is we're going to use not uh, this distance, but we're going to take the square of the distance. So I'm going to call it S for square. And if I square the right side, if I square the right side, it would just get rid of the square root. 
So you may be thinking, hey, what are we doing? We can't just, you know, we can't just change functions any old way that we want, right? I can't take this, this original function and just magically change it. But in this case, we can. And this is the geometric reason. I'm going to give you a really basic graph. I'm going to give you a basic graph. The idea is, suppose that the y values are always greater than or equal to zero. So maybe there's a, a y value, an x, y value. There's another y value. There's another y value. Now let me play connect the dots. Now suppose my function looks something like this. Suppose my function looks something like this. Okay, so there's my function, some generic function. The idea is, and my graph again is going to look really uh, a little rough here, but I think you'll get the idea. The idea is if I take this function and I square it, okay, now notice the x-intercepts are still going to be there because if I square a, a y value of 0, it's still going to be at 0, so those won't move. But that y value that we had a second ago that was right there, if I square it, it'll be somewhere up there. And all of the other values will be getting squared. So, you know, things are going to kind of be getting stretched out is what's going to happen. Now, the moral of the story is notice that the minimums and the maximums still all occur in the exact, at the exact same x coordinates. Those haven't, where the maximums and minimums occur don't change. That is what's important. So this function will have, it will have the same um, x coordinates uh, at, it'll have the same x coordinates to produce maximums. It's going to have the same x coordinates to produce maximums as the original, which we just call d, the distance. So whatever x coordinate gives a maximum on d, that x coordinate is going to give a maximum on s as well. So now let's use derivatives. Okay, so we're getting there. So really that's a long part of the, the explanation. So we've got s equals 9 minus 2x minus 7x squared. We've really done the hard part. So the derivative of 9, that's just going to be 0. The derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. And the derivative of negative 7x squared will be negative 14x. So that's going to be our, our derivative. So I'm going to take that and set it equal to 0 and solve. So I can add the 14x to both sides. I could divide both sides by 14. That would give me negative 2 over 14, or negative 1 over 7 equals x. Okay, now you could use the second derivative test, the first derivative test, uh, to justify that this is, in fact, a maximum. So let's look at the first derivative. So let's see here. Um, we've got negative 1 over 7. Let's take something bigger than negative 1 over 7. Uh, let's say 0. Now notice, too, we would have to be a little careful. You can't just make up any random values because our x values would need to be from negative 1 up to positive 1 because that's where our ellipse... Um, that's going to be the, the, the domain for our ellipse. So I'm going to take something larger than negative 1 over 7. 0 always makes a nice, easy test point. And I'll take something smaller than uh, negative 1 7th. Maybe I'll take negative 1 half. That would work. I could use those as test points. So these should, should be pretty easy to test. Again, we said our derivative was negative 14x minus 2. I'll leave that alone. Uh, I'll leave it like that. So I picked 0 first, so let me do that one. Notice if I plug in 0, I'm going to get a negative 2, which is a negative number. So it says the derivative on this side. It says the derivative has a negative sign, and that means my function is therefore decreasing over that interval. And notice if I plug in, say, negative 1 half, I would have negative 14 times negative 1 half minus 
whoops, minus 2. That's going to be positive 7 minus 2, which is 5. Again, the important part is that's a positive number. That's a positive number. So I know that my original function is increasing. So it says the distance is getting bigger, 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 then it gets smaller. So in fact, it does say that we're going to have a maximum at this x-coordinate of negative one-seventh. And in this case, we could justify it's actually both a local and an absolute maximum. Okay, so we've got a local max at x equals negative one over seven. And now all we have to do is just find the corresponding y-coordinates. So we can just use our uh, parabola, what was it, eight x squared, plus y squared equals 8. And we, subs or we, uh, we changed that, so we said y squared equals 8 minus 8x squared. And when I substituted this in, you can check my arithmetic. I would have 8 minus 8 times negative 1 over 7 squared. After I did the arithmetic, um, I, did, I ended up with y squared equals, what did I have? 384 over 49. And when I took the square root of both sides, I would get plus minus the square root of that number. I simplified this down to be 8 times the square root of 6. The, den or the denominator, right, the square root of 49 would just be 7. That's easier. So it was just cleaning up the numerator. So it says the two points, finally... The two points that are furthest, it says they're going to have an x-coordinate of negative 1 7th, and then the y-coordinate will either be positive negative 8 multiplied by the square root of 6 over 7. Those would be the two points that have a maximum distance from that point 1 comma 0 on the ellipse. So again, there's really not a lot except for the observation in this one. You're just using the distance formula to get it to a single variable. Use the equation of the ellipse. And then the key is don't take the derivative of that um, distance. Square it first. That'll make the arithmetic much easier. Again, you can only use this trick of squaring if your y values are all greater than and equal to zero, like in my picture, it would also work um, if the y values were less than or equal to zero. But be careful there because you would have to think about some geometry nuances. So you could use that information, but you would have to be a little more careful. And I'll let you think about that. But this is a clever idea and it's a useful trick. And it just goes to show you that if you're alert, you can come up with ideas that will make uh, life easier for you in mathematics.